Okay, so what we're going to do today is we're going to start talking about the editing process inside of Avid Media Composer. We have started working with Avid and we've brought in some footage. Uh, we have some footage here um, in this bin called B-roll, and then we have this other bin called interviews. Um, this is this in frame mode. I'm going to get rid of the bin map because I'm not a fan. And I'm going to go to the fast menu and go to align and fill, fill window, just so we have these here. They look a bit bigger. A little pretty. We have these seven people. Fantastic. Let's take a look at Fidel first off. So I'm going to double click on Fidel. I can either do this by clicking on Fidel's face or in text mode, I can go to Fidel and click on the icon. Remember clicking on the name just renames it, but I'm going to click on the icon here. And from the icon, I'm going to look at this clip of Fidel and I'm going to play this. So I'm going to hit the space bar and just play forward. So tell me Fidel about the Minority Manel Initiative Conference. What is it going to be? What it does it involve? And what the expectation is. Okay, so the Minority Male Initiative is going to be- a All right, so I have this clip here. Um, let me talk about some uh, playability inside of here. So I do have this, uh, the space bar that I can play. I can also have the play button. I can also click through this timeline here, and I can also scroll through this timeline by dragging back and forth. I can also hit the frame forward buttons one frame at a time, or the frame backward buttons one frame at a time, or eight frames forward and eight frames back. I can also do this with the left and right arrows if I needed to as well as some other buttons. I think the three and four buttons. Yeah, and we'll go frame forward. Um, so I have those controls, but what I wanna focus on is I wanna focus on this and uh, I'm gonna hit command shift equal or edit, uh, sorry, file uh, settings, command shift equal. And under settings here, I have the keyboard settings. And I wanna talk about these three keys, the J, K and L keys. Uh, these are gonna be your home row for inside of editing. So here inside of the editing controls, I can the L key, which will be play forward. So I'm just gonna rest my three fingers right here on the J, K and L key, my first finger, my middle finger, my ring finger here um, and hit the L key and so it will play forward. So tell me about the Minority Manel Initiative Conference. What is it going to be? What it does it involve? And what the expectation is. Okay. I'm going to hit so the K key and pause. And so K is going to be pause. So L forward, K pause, L forward, K pause. And then J will play me backwards. Cool. So I'm going to play me backwards a little bit. Have that there. I'm going to turn the volume a little bit here. Now the volume on this clip is a little bit low. So what I could do is if I'm on this clip, I could go to tools, um, audio mixer and bring up the audio mixer. I also have a shortcut that I've mapped on my uh, timeline for the audio mixer, um, but I'm going to go to tools, audio mixer, and bring up the audio mixer, and it's going to show me the volume levels for the audio mixer. And I'm just going to drag that over and mount that right here, somewhere in the middle, just so I have it here, so I can see it in case I want it in the future. So this is a little bit quiet, but I'm going to play this, hit the L key and play. Okay, so the Minority Male Initiative is going to be a conference is really geared to now what I notice is, is that he's got a lavalier microphone on him and he's pride predominantly primarily on the uh channel one here a1 so a1 was him a2 was me interviewing him so I want him focused so I'm going to bring him up a little bit maybe up to plus four and just have him a little bit louder or exposing minority male students I can see his levels careers. here professionals that work within those careers I could probably since I really want to focus on him I could probably bring my channel down a little bit maybe down to minus nine here We'll bring him up to plus five, maybe. Cool. So they're toward exposing minority male students to different careers. Great. He sounds great. Um, he's there. So I have the L key to play forward. Professionals that work within those careers. K key to play pause and then J key to play backwards. So if I want to go forward chef. and backward, I can just Six. L. Professionals. That J. Chef. L. Professionals. That J. Chef. L. Professionals that work J and I can just kind of scroll back and forth almost like I'm dragging an open real machine. If you remember open real machines. That shows how old I am. I can hit L twice and it will go double speed forward. And it will actually say in the display here that it's going double speed. Um, so L, L, it's going at 48 frames a second here. So I have 48 frames a second playback speed. I can hit uh, J twice and play backwards at double speed. I can hit K twice and it just pauses. I mean, you can't double speed pause. That doesn't make sense. But anyway, L three times, one, two, three, and it goes triple speed forward. 72 frames a second. That's 24 times three. If you do the math, J three times backwards, triple speed backwards. So I can shuttle forward and shuttle backwards as I need to at double and triple speed. Now, if you go to L four times, you skip quadruple speed and go to quintuple speed. One, two, three, four. Then you lose the audio. You don't get that 
audio playback that way. If you hit J four times, one, two, three, four, you go quintuple speed backwards. And then if you hit L five times, you skip sextuple speed and septuple speed and go to octuple speed. So one, two, three, four, five. Now it's going at 192 frames per second. This is eight times fast. Again, J, one, two, three, four, five octuple speed backwards so this gives me my controls that i can really move forward move backward at various speeds i don't have to drag here i can just use my fingers on the keyboard and having fingers on the keyboard saves my mouse to do other things so having one hand on the keyboard resting on jknl and one hand resting on the mouse i really have kind of a comfortable control in terms of being an editor i always said that you know if i'm an editor you know my my, my home row my resting hand places one hand on the mouse one hand on the JK now. And I guess if that's if you're right-handed, that's the way to go. Or exposing minority male students to different forgive me if you're left-handed. I guess then maybe it's a little different, but be a conference. Now, one more thing. If we hold down K, which is holding the pause, and then hold down L, so both these keys held in simultaneously, we can go slow-mo forward. And we can go hold on K and J and go slow-mo backwards. So my fingers are just holding down these K and J keys and I'm going slow-mo backwards. So again, I can roll forward, roll backward at various speeds. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to this sentence. I wanna get a statement of where Fidel first starts to speak. I ask a question, I say, Okay, so the minor. So he says, okay, so the minority male initiative is going to be a conference. We're going to back up to after the to before to after the okay, but before the so. So we're going to roll backwards, J. There's the okay. Okay. There's this. Okay, so. Okay, so. Right there. And so right there, I can just kind of hold down K and J and roll backwards right before this and the so. And so I'm just in that point, pause point right there. Now, if you look at your keyboard, you'll notice that above J, K, and L, perfectly resting right above J, K, and L, are the I and the O key. So I can move my, my finger up and hit the I key, and the I key is to mark an endpoint. So I can mark an endpoint right there, hit the I key, and say, boom, endpoint. So the minority male initiative is going to be a conference. Now, for this, we were looking for kind of a perfect statement of Fidel. So we're here at the endpoint here. I'm going to hit the Q key, which is way over here, but hit the Q key, which is going to go back to my endpoint. So wherever I am in the, in the time in this uh, viewer here, I can hit the Q key and jump back to the endpoint there. I'm going to hit. So the minority male initiative is going to be a conference that is really geared toward exposing minority male students to different careers professionals that work within those careers and giving them uh, information about uh, careers that they might be interested in. Boom, stop right there. I've stopped right there. I'm gonna hit the O key and that's gonna mark an out point. Now, I could have physically marked an in and out point here by clicking on this button here and hitting on this button here. These two little bookends here, two little inverted thumbnails here are to mark the in point and mark the out point. And I could go to the in point or go to the out point there, but I have the I and the O keys and I have the Q and the W keys to jump to the in point and out point. So Q key jumps to the in point, W puts the out point. You'll notice that when I'm on the in point, it puts a little in point marker there and it puts this little, little triangles over here that I think is supposed to replicate some kind of a, a paper tear right there. So we have that kind of like paper tear. And the, on the reverse end, W, you have a paper tear kind of on there. It's kind of like those fabric scissors shears that they used to use in home ec class. And so we have this section marked here. So we've highlighted or basically marked out a section that we have. So we have an in point out point to get this statement. This was the statement that I wanted Fidel to talk about. And I wanted him to say about the event. He really knocked it out of the park. He really said the, you know, the introductory statement that I really want. I'm going to keep that. So the minority male initiative is going to be a conference that is really geared toward exposing minority male students to different careers professionals that work within those careers and giving them uh, information about uh, careers that they might be interested in. Perfect. It's right there. Exactly the point I want. And so that's golden. I'm going to leave this alone for a second, but I have this. I'm going to leave this alone for a second. I'm going to, I'm going to hide this for a second because I want to start to think of how I'm going to build my sequence. And the way that I'm going to build my sequence is I'm going to have this be the op opening statement. But before I get into that, I want a quick montage of the event. So we're going to introduce the event by just having some footage of the event kind of overlapping quickly just to show kind of a introduction into the event as an idea. So we're going to look here at uh, this B-roll here, and I'm going to find some cool B-roll here. So I'm going to look through some B-roll and decide which B-roll I want. Uh, I'm going to open up, I think, with maybe uh, this clip. Let's see. Let's look. 
let's look at this clip of the students getting up. Where is this clip? Uh, maybe this clip right here. So either 2501 or 2601. We'll kind of look, maybe even 2801 here. I like this. I don't like this kid looking at the other direction, but it's okay. Yeah, this is good. We're going to take this here. And I'm just going to mark an endpoint somewhere in here. When these just, this is going to be just some shots. We'll wait till this gets a little bit steadier and mark an endpoint here. And I'm going to roll forward a little bit, maybe about two seconds forward. And that's about, you know, two something. Uh, there's two seconds right there. Actually, I'm parked right on two seconds. So I marked an in point and an out point on two seconds. And I know that because up here in the display, it's telling me that I've marked two seconds exactly. Let me bring up my cursor so we can see a little bit better here. So now I have up here, I have two seconds exactly that I can see there. So now I have two seconds. Great. So I've recorded two seconds here. Here's my mark. Here's my two seconds right there. Cool. Excellent. Um, so now I have this clip here and I'm going to add this clip into the timeline here. Now we haven't made a timeline, but let's just do this formally. Let's just make a timeline. Do we have to do this? No, I could do this another way, but we're going to go here to the timeline menu and choose new sequence. And we're going to build a sequence. So up here, we're going to choose new sequence. Command shift N is the shortcut. I do love shortcuts. So command shift N up here. And it's going to ask me, hey, what bin do I want to put my sequence into? Well, I have four bins. I have a B-roll bin, interviews, music, and I have a bin called sequences. Well, what do you think? Well, yeah, let's be obvious here. Let's use sequences and choose that as our bin that we're going to go into. And we're going to say, yes, let's make a sequence in the sequences bin like so. We're going to say, okay, and make this sequence. And I put this down. Now, I make the sequence and it makes this new sequence up here in the sequences bin called sequence, untitled sequence 01, which I think, you know, Fair enough is a, is a lousy name for a sequence. So let's let's rename this. Let's go up here, click on this once, type in main sequence. So excellent. I've made this sequence called main sequence. This is fine. This is fantastic. Good. Uh, okay, so let's play. Um, down here, you'll see a couple things. Um, you'll see this thing in the timeline here called track selectors. Now, we had these before. You'll see these green track selectors that say V1, A1, and A2, and these uh, blue track selectors that say V1, A1, and A2. And these are called track selectors or track selects. And on the green side, you'll notice that the source video, the video that I have here is green. And so it's the, the bar is green here. It's this, this is the green side. So these are the source side track selectors. This is the information of video and two channels of audio that are coming from this clip. So this clip is feeding one track of video, V1 and A1 and A2, two, two tracks of audio onto these clips. On the timeline side, the timeline side is blue over here. And so then on the blue side, we have V1, A1 and A2 on the blue side. So I've initially created a sequence that has one track of video, two tracks of audio. I could make more tracks if I wanted to, but we have those as they are perfectly fine. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go here and say, um, I'm going to take this clip and I'm going to put this, the V1, A1, and A2 onto this timeline here. Now we could drag this down. We could grab this and drag this and pull this and pull this down and that would work. And we will do that at some point. I'm going to undo though, because I want to talk about a little bit more of a formal way of editing. And I want to talk about a little idea called three-point editing. And three-point editing consists of, well, three points. And this is a classic way that people have been editing for years and years and years. This is the kind of the, the, the fundamentals of editing, of how editing works. Um, so we've marked two points. We've marked an in point and an out point here on the timeline. And so we've said in point here, out point here. So that's two points, three points editing. We need a third point. So we're going to go to the beginning of my sequence here. At the beginning of my sequence, we're going to mark an in point right here. It's going to put an in point right there. And it's going to say, hey, take this clip and put this clip right here. Now, honestly, there's nothing on the timeline whatsoever, so it doesn't really matter, but we're gonna put this in point to out point and we're gonna line this up, this section, kind of right over to here and kind of gonna line up in point to in point and gonna go right here. So we're kind of designating where this is going. And now I can use these two key buttons. Um, one's called splice in, it's the yellow button, and one's called overwrite, it's the red button. So the yellow button and the red button are right there. This is splice in overwrite. These keys are replicated on the keyboard on the V and B key. So if you are resting on J canal, you can actually reach your finger back and hit V or B. Either one will work. But for now, I'm going to choose either one of these. Right now, I have an empty timeline. There's nothing on here. So it doesn't matter whether I'm splicing into nothing or overwriting on nothing. It makes no difference. But in this case, I'm going to choose splice in, hit the V key or hit this button, and I'm going to splice this clip in. And now it's added in two seconds of this timeline here. So now we have two seconds of playback. I hit the L key. Now notice that if I'm on the timeline or if I'm on this monitor, now I, when I hit the L key, I'm playing back this. So if I'm on the source monitor, I'm playing back this. If I'm on the timeline, 
I'm playing back this. Okay, so it's a little quick, little two second shot. So I'm gonna just do a montage of like two second shot, two second shot, two second shot, just kind of a little quick introductory. But what I realized is, is I didn't really like the sound. Um, there's, a, there's a natural sound here that's occurring here in this, and I don't really love this natural sound. Yeah, this is not, I, I don't want the sound. Let me undo for a second. And let's talk about track selectors. So track selectors decide A, what this source side is feeding and B, what this timeline is receiving. So whether it's sending something or receiving something. In this case, I don't want to send over audio from this source. I just want to send the video. Later on, I'm going to put music underneath this and have a music bed that's going to play underneath this. But for now, I don't really need this. So I'm just going to turn these track selectors off. And that's going to say, hey, disable these. Don't play back the audio. So don't send me audio. Just send me the video stuff. I don't want, I don't want the pickles and onions. I just want the, the patty or whatever it may be. There's your metaphor. Um, so now I'm going to choose splice in or overwrite. Again, it doesn't matter. And when I splice this in, it splices in video, but then it splices in two tracks of silence for the audio. So now I just get the visual. You can imagine some kind of great music playing underneath this. Some... Cool. And so I have that there. Okay, so I have one clip. That's clip number one. I'm going to add another clip after this. So we're going to go back to B-roll. And I'm going to go here and I'm going to find, uh, let's say, uh, we'll scroll through and I'll grab in. Let's see what we got. Maybe, hmm, maybe this clip, 7001. And so this clip is a little over the shoulder here. We're going to grab this and I'm going to type in two seconds. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to hit um, the in point here. And I'm going to add two seconds on here. And I'll show you a trick. If you have a keyboard with a number pad, not the, not the top row numbers, but the actual little side, you know, calculator number pad that you have on the side. If you click on this clip here and you clicked on this clip and you're on this clip, if you, by touching nothing else, if you just type the plus button, plus 200, that's going to add two seconds. I hit enter. It jumps my cursor, my time indicator over two seconds. And then I can just mark an out point there. I have marked two seconds there like so. So from beginning to end, I have marked two seconds. Wonderful there. So I'll do that again. I can type in plus 200 and then I can add two seconds there. So now I have an in point and an out point. Guess what? I have two points of my three point edit. Well, I said, I'm going to add this clip at the end of this clip. So I'm going to scroll all the way to the end here, mark an in point on my timeline. There's my third point. So it's going to pick up right from there. It's going to stitch it right onto the end right there. I'm going to choose splice and overwrite. Again, it doesn't matter because I'm just adding on to more blank space, more emptiness there. So in this case, I'm going to choose overwrite just for fun. I'm going to add that in and I'm going to go, oh man, I brought in some audio as well. Oh, shoot. Um, you guys have yeah, I don't really want this audio. I mean, I guess in that sound is cool sometimes, but in this case, it's not like, you know, waves crashing or skateboarders or anything. It's just um, you guys have some guy talking. It's not really cool. So I'm going to undo really quick and I'm going to remember... Oh yeah, I got to turn off my audio on this source clip so it doesn't bring over the audio. Here's the thing. You're going to make mistakes. When you first get into editing, you're going to make mistakes. Of course, everyone makes mistakes. Here's my advice. If you make mistakes and if you find yourself making a mistake, you do something and you go, oh, that was wrong. I spliced this in or I overwrote this and I did something wrong. And this wasn't supposed to show up. My advice is whenever you make mistakes, just undo. You're on a computer system, so you can just undo. But more importantly, look at your track selectors. When people make mistakes and they make problems, one of the first things they make mistakes are is they make some mistakes with the track selectors. They're always missing some detail in the track selectors. You're going to see this happen where so I'm going to do something wrong. I do something wrong all the time. And I'll go, oh, man, I did this wrong. Track selectors turn off the audio and the track selectors, fix your track selectors, understand how this works. This is the most complicated part of the editing system. And so this is going to be the one where you're going to make mistakes. So now I'm going to, again, overwrite this in. Boom. I'm just adding it in. And now I have two clips in a row. Here, let's take a look at these clips here. We'll play this back. We have some music playing. This looks great. Fantastic. I'm happy. I'm happy. I don't know if you're happy, but I'm happy. Cool. Great. Let's grab in one more clip and I'm going to grab in a clip here. Um, I have this poster 4701 and I'm going to open up with this poster. I like this poster coming across here. Uh, this is this little pan over on this poster here. The minority male initiative conference setting priorities for career success. I like where it stops. So I'm going to make sure that it, where it stops, it's going to land. Boom. And it's going to hit there. And I just want two seconds of this. So I just marked an out point in this case. So I'm doing this kind of, I'm, I'm back rolling this a little bit. So I marked the out point of where I want it to stop. I'm going to hit minus 200. 
don't know why two seconds is the time. I just chose two seconds just to have some kind of two second rhythm. It made enough sense to me. Hit minus 200, hit enter, and then it's going to jump me back two seconds. Now, do I need to be this perfect? Do I need to have it exactly two seconds? Could it be two seconds and eight frames or one second and 21 frames? Probably, but I'm just, you know, you're working for somebody. They say, hey, make, give me a two second clip. You give me a two second clip. But now I say in this example, I want this clip to be at the beginning. Um, I want this clip not at the end. I want this at the beginning. So I'm going to scroll to the beginning of this sequence. And at the beginning of the sequence, I can just hit the home key and jump to the beginning. I'm going to mark an endpoint here. This is going to go, this clip is going to go here. I'm going to make sure to turn my audio track selectors because I don't want audio in this clip either. There's probably very little audio in this, but yeah, there's some background talking. But um, I don't want the audio in this clip. So I'm going to turn my audio track selectors off and leave that alone. And I'm going to say, cool, let's leave that here alone. So in this case, I'm going to add this clip in here. Now, in this case, this is going to matter. Am I splicing in or overwriting? Well, thank God, undo. If I choose overwrite, it's going to copy over this clip. It's going to write over this 2601 with this new clip like this. That clip just went away, and now we just have this new clip on top of this one, which is not what I wanted. So in this case, what I want to do is I want to put a wedge in here, and I want to push this in here and push these ones over and kind of wedge this in here. And that's why I like the V key, actually, because it looks like a little wedge. So I'm going to splice this in with the V key or the splice in button and put this in there. And then I have three clips in a row. Hit the home key. I can watch my montage, pretend that I'm listening to music. It's cool. So now I have my little introduction. We'll put a title over this later. We'll make this all cool. But for now, I have this beginning intro. Well, let's go back to Fidel because now we have this interview here of Fidel that I really liked that was his opening statement. And this is the one I wanted to do the opening statement. So I can look for Fidel. One of the nice things I have is I do have this menu right here. And through this menu, I can look at clips I've opened recently. So this little where it says 4701, this is the name of the clip right here. This is actually a menu that I can choose. This is the clip name menu. And I can scroll and choose Fidel. And Fidel's marks are still there. I think, at least I think they are. I should probably review and queue. So the minority male initiative is going to be... So Fidel is there. Now, in this case, I do want Fidel's audio. So I'm going to leave my audio track sectors alone. It's going to feed video onto the video track, audio onto the audio track, and audio two onto the audio two track. Amazing. So I'm going to splice this in or overwrite this. Again, I'm adding to the end here. Now, I haven't put a third point. I'll let you in a secret. If I fail, if I forget, if I neglect to put a third point, it will make the third point the point where the cursor is. So if I just leave the cursor there and I don't actually put a point in there, I know it's sometimes nice to put the point there, but if I don't and I just leave the cursor there, it's going to use where the cursor is. It's going to default. It's going to say, hey, I'm just trying to save you from yourself. And it's going to put you where the cursor is. I'm going to hit overwrite in this case. Or I don't know, overwrite splice in. Again, it doesn't really matter at this point. I'm just adding to the end and I'm going to add this clip in here. So now home key I have. Well, let me go back to home key on, on the timeline. Music, 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 music. Sounds really cool. Cool. So the Minority Male Initiative is going to be a conference that is really geared toward exposing minority male students to different careers, professionals that work within those careers, and giving them uh, information about uh, careers that they might be interested in. Great. This is fantastic. Fidel sounds great. It's a good intro. It's a good opening. We're doing this little kind of news piece documentary kind of thing. Short form, kind of non-narrative. Um, anyway, we have this here. So the Minority Male Initiative is going... Now, Fidel's great. I like the way he looks. I like his whole presentation. He looks really professional. He looks great. It's amazing. Um, wearing a suit with a bow tie. It's, it's fantastic. But I feel like if he's going to be talking about cool things, like exposing minority male students to different careers, we want to see it, right? We want to see the cool stuff he's talking about. So let's take a look and let's look here at some of the cool things he's talking about. So in here, he says exposing... A conference... Is really geared toward exposing. I'm going to put an endpoint right there at exposing. So right there where he says endpoint. I can do this on the fly. I can just reach till I get to the point and then the I key when he says exposing. Conference that is really geared toward exposing minority male students to different careers. So I just marked an endpoint out point around the section where he says exposing minority male students to different careers. So right here, Q. Um, exposing minority male students to different. I hit it a little bit late. I can come back a couple of frames and hit and update my endpoints. So I just updated my endpoints, so it gets exposing. I got to, I got to exposing. I missed the X part. 
exposing minority male students to different careers. So right here, over this section of here, I want to have him continue to talk, but I want to, I want to cut away to the visual of what he's talking about. I want to cut into the visual of what he's saying. So he's saying... Really geared toward exposing minority male students to different careers. Awesome. Good deal. Cool. So I'm going to go here to the B-roll and I'm looking at the B-roll and I'm going to look for a, a, a visual that looks like somebody exposing minority male students to different careers. I like this clip at 3401. This is fantastic. So we get this pan over here of this here. We're going to start from this kid standing up and then, or this guy standing up. And we're going to pan from over. So we're going to start here. So we're going to mark an endpoint there. Now I'm going to do three point editing a different way. I'm letting the timeline define the length of time that I want to cover. How long is this clip? Eh, it doesn't matter. I have an endpoint here for where I want this clip to start. So I want this clip to go on top of here, over right on top of here, over this section here for however long I need to cover this. Now, here, if I look at the timeline, it tells me the timeline. I need to cover three seconds and 18 frames. Well, do I have three seconds and 18 frames here? You know, if I marked my endpoint maybe here, I wouldn't have that. I might only have 23 frames or something. That's going to be a problem. But over here... Yeah, I'm sure I have at least three second 18 frames. And again, I, I care less where this ends. It's going to end, and we could actually look. We could hit Q and then hit plus 318, jump forward, and we'd end, we're going to end about here. So, But I don't need a fourth point. This is not four-point editing. This is three-point editing, and three-point editing is all we really need. That's all we need to make this work. And this can be as long as it needs to be to cover this space. This is a different way of approaching the edit. This is a way of approaching the edit from the perspective of, hey, the length of time, the timeline, the soundbite that I want to cover with cool visual is more important than whatever this visual is in terms of the ending of this. I just have some random B-roll that's just going to be a cutaway for this shot. It looks all good here. It looks exciting. A little pan action. And that's that's good enough for me. So I have this here. Now, as I said before, I'm going to choose overwrite. We're going to overwrite this on. So we're just going to copy over this clip here. I don't want the audio to come over. So I'm going to make sure the audio is off here. And I'm not giving back audio here on the source clip. So I'm not feeding audio onto the timeline. And I'm going to choose overwrite or the B keys to overwrite this on here. And when I do so, I get this, which is a problem. If you play this back, you're going to see a problem automatically. It's really geared toward... professionals that we well that's a problem something went wrong something went drastically wrong and and it's hard to determine what went wrong but let's look at the track selectors here i did turn out the audio so it didn't feed audio but here's the trick about track selectors and here's the tricky thing to understand about track selectors even though this isn't feeding audio this door these openings these track selectors are expecting something to come through so if you open the door and no one comes in your house guess what just came in your house air you're just letting all the cold air in or the hot air in or whatever it may be. You're opening the door and you're letting air in. So when I do this, undo for a second, when I do this, if this is on, if these track switches are on, it's going to feed through something. If Even if you're not feeding it anything, if the mouth is open, again, this is kind of mixing analogies here, um, it's going to bring in blank air. So these track switches are irrelevant. It's these track switches I want to turn off. And you can see the highlight section says, hey, I'm going to overwrite and bring this over like this without these track switches. Now I'm not overwriting on here. If this was on, I'm overwriting on the audio. So the little highlight section is really helpful to tell you what you're doing wrong. So here I'm going to choose overwrite or choose the B key into the B key. And I'm going to overwrite and cut away to this. So now we have Fidel talking. He continues to talk. To be a conference is really geared toward exposing minority male students to different careers, professional. And that's the cutaway that I want. That's the visual that I want. Or exposing minority male students to different careers, professionals. That Let's do this again. Let's try this again. So I'm going to go back here to where Fidel starts speaking again. We're going to cut to here. Um, I can tell this because when I get to this edge here, it puts a little bracket here that says on the end of the end of the segment here. I'm on the corner of the segment here. So right there, there's a little bracket that says in the corner segment. If I was on the Previous edit, there'd be a little bracket over here. That's the end of this segment there. I can also zoom in and zoom out. So I do have my little zoom scale bar down here to zoom in and zoom out and really see this close up. Um, but I also have zoom in and zoom out on my up and down hours. I did map those to be up and down, zoom in and zoom out, so I can have that there. But I want to go right from here. Now, I'll show you a quick way of doing this. If I hold on the command key while I'm dragging through, you notice when I drag through normally, it just drags through the whole clip here. Um, perfectly fine. When I hold on command, it actually snaps to the cut point or snaps the head frame specifically. So here I'm snapping to the head frame 
and I'm cutting there. So I'm going to snap to this head frame and mark my endpoint here. And I'm going to play this back. L key playback. Professionals that work within those careers. And professionals that work within those careers. So now I'm going to find a visual of professionals who work within those careers. Something that really spells out professionals who work within those careers. I'm going to go to this shot here, 5201 here. And we're going to play this back. There's a weird zoom in here that I want to get past. Maybe I get before the zoom. We'll get this action here. Professionals who work with those careers. And again, I need to cover a two second and 10 frame shot here. Market in point. I see that the only section that's highlighted is here is this uh, V1 here. And I'm going to say, because uh, the audio tracks like there's some timeline are still off. And I'm going to choose overwrite again. It's going to overwrite this from here to whatever's two seconds later. Yeah, from about here to here onto this over right on top of this, just copy over this and have this play on top. Different careers, professionals that work within those careers. And so we're going to hit overwrite B key, boom, and put this in here. It's really geared toward exposing minority male students to different careers, professionals that work within those careers and giving them uh, information. Now we have this last section here. This we'll do this one more time. This last section here, we have him say that work within those careers and giving them uh, information about uh, careers that they might be interested in. So I have this shot of handing paper here, and this is these two guys receiving paper. They look like they're getting information about careers they might be interested in. Yeah, I don't know. That's that works there. So we have this shot here. I'm gonna mark an endpoint right about here where he's putting his jacket on, and we're gonna have him getting some information. This looks very inf informative. But now we can debate how we want to do this edit. So we want to cover over this section where he says those careers and giving them uh, information about uh, careers that they might be interested in. So how do we want to do this? Well, let's say we want to do this. We can do this one of four ways. We can have this cut immediately. So we can hit uh, Command click, uh, and then have this play and giving them uh, information. When he says, and giving them information about careers. Uh, information about uh, careers that they might be in. And right here, right at the very end, we're just gonna come back to Fidel. So we're gonna have this over a section over here. We'll overwrite this in. I'll just show you this to you, overwrite like this. And so it's gonna be, we're gonna end with Fidel. Work within those careers and giving them uh, information about uh, careers that they might be interested in. So there's a little end with Fidel as an idea. That's version A. Version B would be is if we, came back to Fidel a little bit early in the beginning and then let this run to the end. So we just kind of introduce Fidel here as a segment to remind you what Fidel looks like and then cut back to it. So it would look like this. Professionals that work within those careers and giving them uh, information about uh, careers that they might be interested in. Amazing. Um, the other option would be the best of both worlds. So we cut to Fidel early, just to remind you of Fidel. And then we cut to Fidel again late. This is option C in those careers and giving them uh, information about uh, careers that they might be interested in. We could do that as an idea. Or option D is we could cover over Fidel entirely and say, forget Fidel. We're just going to overwrite him entirely and we'll never see Fidel again. Those that work within those careers and giving them uh, information about uh, careers that they might be interested in. We never see Fidel again. And so we covered over entirely. Undo. I keep hitting undo to go back. I, you can decide whichever one you want to do, but you know, I just want to show you that there's four different ways of doing this edit in this moment here, and that's part of the editing decision making. You know, it's it's deciding what works best. In this case, I'm going to work with uh, A. So I'm going to cut here immediately, and then and end with Fidel. We're going to kind of book about, Fidel at the beginning uh, and bookend him at the end here. Uh, careers that they might be interested in. So cool. And we're going to have this like there. So our sequence looks like this. We'll go back to home key back to the very beginning. Imagine music here. We'll put music in later. So the Minority Male Initiative is going to be a conference that is really geared toward exposing minority male students to different careers, professionals that work within those careers and giving them uh, information about uh, careers that they might be interested in. All right, so let's try this again. Let's do another interview here. We'll do another segment of interview and we're gonna to go to interviews and we're gonna try this a different way. We're gonna look at uh, Wayne here. This is Wayne. Uh, Wayne is here and we have Wayne. Uh, Wayne is great. I love Wayne to death. Wayne's a little difficult. Um, Wayne Boatwright. Wayne Boatwright. Tell me a little bit about your experience with this event, um, how it's been, what's really been. Again, I could lower my volume on, on the microphone because this is the microphone here. Bring this up a little bit. You've been exciting about it and what you really, what the real takeaway for you has been. 
Okay, good. First, Wayne tries to grab a microphone, which I don't like when he grabs a microphone. Good. Thank you, Chad. Nope, nope, One nope. The, I push uh, him away. I work for Meridian. Hey. The second part about Wayne is Wayne, he's great. He's informative. He rambles a little bit. He first starts telling me about where he works, which is not really information I need. Hackensack Meridian. And a large part of our responsibilities in the community is that we work very closely with the community, all demographics of the community. All right. I'm going to pick him up from here. I'm going to start him here. And when there's an opportunity. And when there's an opportunity to participate. So I mark my endpoint by hitting the I key. I'm hitting the L key to go forward. In an event like this, which is a minority male initiative. Then he tells me what the name of the event is, which I don't need him to tell me what the name of the event is. It's going to be a graphic. Minority men and education for the young. Then he starts talking to me about where he works again. My role as a hospital executive, a lot of times I see a lot of these young boys come through my hospitals because they've been in some real. This is all not part of the project I'm situation. focusing on. So, so this is extra stuff to bring these young men together. All right. Now he's back on track the purposes of encouraging them in their education that they're in and continuing them to get a college degree to, to have them become familiar with organizations like Brookdale, who they is affordable and an opportunity for them to grow is exciting for us as an as an organization. All right, so that's there. So Wayne gave that soundbite. I just marked an endpoint and outpoint, and I noticed that this whole soundbite is 42 seconds long. I mean, it's 42 and nine frames. It's a really long soundbite. That's a lot more than it needed. But Wayne also rambled. He also went into a whole bunch of things that I don't need. So I'm going to have to make some editorial decisions about his content here. So I'm going to add this clip in the endpoint. I have an endpoint, an outpoint. I'm going to go here, make a corresponding endpoint, and I'm going to add this in. I can splice in or overwrite this. It doesn't matter. I'm going to choose splice in, hit the V key, and splice this in. Boom, I do like my shortcut keys and I'll add this in. I go boom. And all of a sudden I realize, oops, I made a big, horrible mistake. Look at this. This is a big, horrible mistake. Look, I've lost all the audio. All the audio. Oh, shoot. I forgot when I brought this in, undo. I forgot to turn the track selectors on. You're going to make mistakes. And when you make mistakes, it's going to be the track selectors. I promise you. Again, I'll overwrite this or splice this in. Boom. And I'll bring Wayne in here. So let's take a look at Wayne and let's see what we can do about Wayne's audio editing Wayne, cleaning him up about uh, careers that they might be interested in. And when there's an opportunity to participate in an event like this, which is a minority male initiative, which we not only understand the issues associated with minority men and, and education for these young men, et cetera, but in my role as a hospital executive, a lot of times I see a lot of these young boys come through my hospitals because they've been in some real um, difficult and, and dangerous situations. So an opportunity to bring these young men. Okay, let's say, for example, if he said, in dangerous situations. So, an opportunity. If he said, there's an opportunity to participate. And when there's an opportunity to participate in an event like this. And when there's an opportunity to participate in an event like this, which is a minority. If he said, and when there's an opportunity. And when there's an opportunity to participate in an event like this. And when there's an opportunity to participate in an event like this. Which right here and then he said and when there's an opportunity to participate in men like this and then he said to bring these young men together for the so i marked an in and out point around a whole section i don't need he's going to say and when there's an opportunity to participate in an event like this then he's going to say to bring these young men together so and when there's an opportunity to participate in an event like this to bring these men together uh, also if you want to if you hold down uh shift you can you can this will as you scroll it will play back this is called digital scrubbing so hold down shift and you can digital scrub there's a there's a command palette shortcut uh if you go to tools command palette um there is a control that will enable to turn that on i believe it's a play um toggle digital audio scrub we can map that if you want to map that onto the timeline and so now you can just turn that on and we'll do it all the time. No shift key. I don't necessarily love it all the time. So. And when there's an opportunity to participate, and when there's an opportunity to participate in an event like this, to bring these young men together for the purpose of, I think that's a cohesive statement. So I'm kind of, I think I made a, a relatively cohesive statement. So here he says, and when there's an opportunity to participate in an event like this, to bring these young men together. So I'm going to hit the, uh, I'm going to take this section out. So I've marked an endpoint and an outpoint of this section. And I want to focus on these two keys right here. These two keys are what's called extract and lift. The extract looks like a little pair of scissors. The lift looks like a little muscle guy doing a overhead press there, um, doing like a little 
over at squat. Um, he's a little lifter guy. So extract and lift and those two keys like so. Uh, in this case, if I choose lift, I'm going to pull this gap out. I'm going to pull this whole section out and remove it. And it's going to leave a huge blank space there. So it just leaves a hole. Paid in an event a like hole. This. Which is sort of not what I want. I want to close this blank space. I want to close this gap out. So in this case, I want to choose extract. This is the Z and the X keys, not Command Z. That's undo um, or Control Z. Uh, but I'm going to hit the X key and extract. And what it's going to do is going to cut this out and then extract this and then close this gap by pushing, pulling everything to the left. So extract this out and it looks like this. So now we have this Wayne going. Yeah. And when there's an opportunity to participate in an event like this, to bring these young men together. For the so he says, if you listen to this. And when there's an opportunity to participate in an event like this, to bring these young. And when there's an opportunity to participate in an event like this, to bring these young men together, that sounds good to me. And when there's an opportunity to participate in an event like this, to bring these young men. Yeah. Now this sounds good and it sounds cohesive. It sounds coherent. We've cut a whole big section. We can actually undo and see how big a section. We cut a 20 second section out of this. We cut this down 20 seconds, killed this. And now it sounds great. And when there's an opportunity to participate in an event like this, to bring these young men together. Sounds fantastic. Uh, the only problem is, is there's a jump cut. And a jump cut is what happens when you film the same person in the same perspective, in the same composition, in the same place, and time has passed, but you put a big cut and cut out a big section. The body will never be in the same place because humans are dynamic and when they will move an around. To participate in an event like this, to bring his head moves drastically and it looks like a cut. And, it, and the audience watches this and goes, oh man, somebody cut some big important thing out here. Why are they an hiding secrets? Like to bring and there's a big, huge cut in here. To participate in an event like this, to bring the so what we want to do is we want to hide this cut. So if we listen to this, this sounds great. And you can actually do that if you want to. You can either look away, don't look at the screen, just listen to it. Um, or what you can do is you can hit this button right here and this button would turn the tv off here this is the, the track monitor and this little track monitor says oh let's just listen to this when there's an opportunity to if this was on the radio would it sound clean when there's an opportunity to participate in an event like this to bring these young men together yeah sounds okay maybe a little bit better but we'll, we i think we're okay there's an opportunity to participate in an event like this to bring these young yeah sounds good so now we're turning this monitor back on because i just want to listen to this so now we're going to do is we're going to cut away to another shot we're going to cover this with b-roll not because we need to, but because we want to just cover the jump cut. We're going to put a little Band-Aid over the jump cut. It's kind of like a little magic trick. We're going to be like, hey, look over here while we make a cut over on this side. So we're going to put some other visual over this so we don't see this. Now, here, we did one way of adding B-roll in. And on other systems, you may have done this a different way. Um, there may be a different process. We're going to do this kind of a different way, um, a, a way that some other editors focus on. And I've seen others editors insist on this we're going to use this with a different track we're going to make another track so we're going to go to timeline new uh video track the shortcut is command y so we're going to hit command y here command y if you're on a pc control y we're going to hit command y or control y and make a new video track and that's going to make a new video track video two up here is now video two now what i'm going to do is i'm going to find a piece of b-roll here that works with this um so and when there's an opportunity to participate in event like this to bring these young men together let's just get a shot of these young men being brought together in this location uh, and that's them walking away kind of let's see let's find a visual here of this yeah we'll just get kind of this action here and i'm going to have this shot here i don't know maybe this one yeah, I like this a little bit better to bring these young men together. I don't know, something. Maybe we'll get something closer. I don't know, something. So we have this shot here. So we're going to take this shot here, 2501 here, and we're going to bring this in here. So I'm going to have just a, a, a band aid over this. I'm going to mark here. There's an opportunity to participate in an event like this to bring these young men together. So right from here, where he says, opportunity to participate in an event like this to bring these young men together, I'm going to turn my audio off in the timeline because I do not want my audio in the timeline. And now I don't want my audio, I don't want my video on video one. I'm gonna grab this and turn off V1 and I wanna patch this up to V2. And I can do this over here by holding down V1 on the source clip and dragging a little arrow. You can drag a little arrow, this little arrow that drags. I'm gonna drag this little arrow over here to V2. And we're gonna bring this over here to V2 and add this onto V2. And now it's up here. So now my monitor, now my track is up here. So it's gonna send V1 of the source clip onto V2 on the timeline. So 
I'm going to choose in this case, overwrite again. My audio is off. I can turn this audio off if I want to, but it's unnecessary because the door is already closed. doesn't matter who's at the door. The door is already closed. And I'm going to overwrite it here. And now it looks like this. I'd be interested in. And when there's an opportunity to participate in an event like this, to bring these young men together for the, for the purposes of... It's kind of a boring, dull shot. Maybe I want to change the shot out. To participate in an event like... I'll show you a trick. If I hit this button right here, this is my mark clip button. This is a quick way of grabbing this clip entirely, marking it and finding better visual, something more dynamic maybe. Maybe this shot, this is very... He's laughing too much. I don't know something maybe maybe this shot 2601 i like this oh we used this before yeah we use this over here 2801 maybe uh, something maybe we'll go to 2901 yeah try that shot i'm going to mark this i'm going to overwrite this and replace this shot here so we just change the shot out opportunity to participate in an event like this to bring these young men together for the for the purposes of encouraging them in their education that they're in participate in an event like and now we did it this way we put the b-roll not on the same track as the main content we put it on an upper track this is a different way of doing this we'll talk about both these ways as an idea let's do this one more time let's take a look like this to bring these young men together for the for the purposes of encouraging them in their education that they're in and continuing them to get a college degree now i like from i want to get rid of all this to have them become familiar with organizations like Brookdale, who they is affordable and an opportunity for them to grow. So here, again, I'm going to turn my, uh, my video one, my audio one, audio two tracks on here. And I'm going to say, he's going to say. And continuing them to get a college degree. And continuing to get a college degree. Is exciting for us as an opportunity. Is exciting for us in an organization. That's what he's going to say. Again, I'm going to extract this out. So I'm marking the section I want to kill. And I'm going to hit the X key and extract this out and get rid of that. Again, I have a jump cut here. And continuing them to get a college degree is exciting. For Little jump cut, maybe barely continuing noticeable. Them to get a college degree is exciting. But it feels continuing awkward. Continuing them to get a college degree is exciting. Time has passed. There was a glitch. And continuing them to the get system. a college degree is exciting. So again, I'm going to say. And continuing them to get a college degree is exciting. Here he says, and continuing to get a college degree. We're going to make sure that V1 is patched into V2. I'm going to turn off A1, A2, and V1. I don't want to have, I don't want to, I don't want to get rid of this stuff, right? I want to just have this left alone and put V1 on V2. And there's this shot here of this uh, Rutgers table here, this continuing to get a college degree. Here's Rutgers University. We're going to have a visual here of Rutgers University. And again, I'm going to have that there. As long as I have on the timeline, two seconds and 11 frames up here of footage. Looks good enough for me. I'm going to overwrite this on top here. So now it looks like this. And when there's an opportunity to participate in an event like this, to bring these young men together. For the, for we the never see the jump cut because we encouraging them in their education. Cut away. And continuing them to get a college degree is exciting for us as an, as an organization. And that works. Now, we talk about both these ways of doing this. Way one is we put this on the main content track. We kind of just erased Fidel and we cut over these different B-roll shots of different stuff. So we just have different shots here. I can even go through and rename some of these shots. One of these is called handing paper 3401. We can find 3401 and call it, I don't know, um, breakout room or something. So here, if we find 3401, we're going to call this breakout room. And now this is called breakout room 30, 20, 50, 201 is, um, We'll call this grown up table. Now we have these. So we cut from Fidel to these three shots here, there, like so. And we have those happening inside of there. And that's perfectly fine there. The other way of doing this is to put this on an upper track. And this is here on the upper track. Uh, which way is better and which way should we do it? Now, I have some friends who will insist you need to do it this way. You need to put it in the upper track. Don't touch your main content tracks. Always cut your B-roll on a video two track. And that's, that makes sense. It's a perfectly reasonable way to do it. And the reason why it's reasonable is because if we say, hey, we don't want this shot, what we could do is we could grab, you know, we could mark this clip, be on video track two, hit the mark clip button. This will just mark the in and out points perfectly around the clip. So we don't have to do it ourselves. Mark the clip and it marks it perfectly around the clip. If we're parked in the clip, it'll mark perfectly around the clip and grab the clip. And we say, hey, we don't want this. We can just lift this out. Boom. And now guess what? 
we have Wayne back. The problem here is if I go here to this clip here of this grown up table here, if I was to be on V1 and I hit mark clip and I hit uh, lift Z key, I don't get I don't get Fidel back. I don't get Fidel back. I'd have to I'd have to edit Fidel back in at the exact sync point. Careers. Perfect. So this way is beneficial because this way, if I ever get rid of something here, mark clip, get rid of this Z key, I get Wayne back. If I do anything else to this, I, Wayne is still there. I haven't touched Wayne. I've just I just put a bandaid over him. I didn't I didn't like, you know, remove it. I just kind of covered over it, and it's just kind of like yeah, it's a little it's a little sticker on top there. And you can see here in the monitors, there's a little monitor control. Here's the monitor for V2 and V1. If I click on a V1, I can see what the original video looked like and maybe question, oh, was the jump cut really that bad? An event like this to bring the oh, yeah, it was. Okay. And so here's V2. So I have this control to see V1 or V2 back and forth to see what's going on. I can do this here because I put my B roll up on my upper track, and that makes sense and that's logical. And I understand that reasoning. Here's the trick with that. And here's the problem with that. Here's the circumstance you run into. When you start to put stuff in the upper tracks and when you start to build something in the upper tracks, the tricky thing you run into is this. Somebody comes along and says, hey, I want to throw in B-roll. Uh, I want to, instead of three clips as the intro montage, um, I want to throw in a fourth clip in here. I want to have a fourth clip in here and I'm going to go, okay, so let's go into V1 here. We're going to go to V1. Uh, I don't want the audio from a clip, but I want to grab a piece of B-roll. And we're just going to look in frame view for B-roll. And we want another shot of B-roll, something cool here. And we're going to throw this clip in right here. And I'm going to hit command click. And I'm going to go to snap to this cut point. I'm going to put a clip right in there. I don't want the out point. So I can hit, uh, I didn't mention this before, but on the keyboard, um, and you can always see command shift equal. Um, you can always go to keyboard and see your keyboard shortcuts. Um, D is remove the in point or clear the in mark. F is clear the out point, And G is clear both marks. There's your J, K, and L. There's your Q and W, but uh, D, F, and G is clear the point. So I'm going to clear the out point because I don't want to see it. So we're going to go here in the timeline and click, clear the out point. So cool. So I have an in point here, and I'm going to grab in two seconds of this shot. So I have an in point plus two seconds, out point. So I've grabbed two seconds. I'm going to turn the audio off, and I'm going to splice this in. I'm going to push this in and push this all over, which it will do. And it will splice this in and push this over and, and throw this clip in between 4701 and 2601, we're going to throw in this 2801 in between here, like so. And so we're going to splice this in right here and go boom. And that worked, except for a problem. What I didn't notice, what I forgot to remember, and maybe because I was zoomed in, maybe because I was zoomed in super close over here, and I was looking here and I was like, yeah, let me focus right here on this point, and I'll splice this in, and it looks like it works fine. Yeah, just splice this clip in, undo, splice this clip in, Perfectly fine. What it didn't do was it didn't splice in a blank space on V2. And so guess what happened to V2? They shifted over. They're not covering the jump cuts anymore. And so here. Interesting. And when there's an opportunity to participate in an event like this, to bring. There's my jump cut right there. Sorry, let me turn V2 on. So now I, I still cut around B-roll. And when there's an opportunity to participate in an event like this, to bring. The but there's my jump cut still there. Here encouraging them in their education that they're in and continuing them to get a college degree is exciting. Now, could I be smarter? Absolutely. I could absolutely be smarter. I could say, hey, when doing stuff like this, turn V2 on so that V2 moves over as well. Even though there's nothing feeding V2, it's still going to push over blank space. And when it pushes over blank space, it's going to allow for everything to push over. That's the smart way to go about it. But as I start adding more video tracks, I start getting V2 and V3 for titles and V4 for overlays and V5 for picture and pictures or whatever it may be, or V6 for adjustment layers or whatever it may be. I start to get more video tracks. As I start to add in more video tracks, it starts to get more complicated. So command Y, I start adding a whole bunch of tracks. Now I got to remove stuff over. So I say, oh, I have stuff on this track up here and this track up here and this track up here. You know, and I start having stuff in more tracks, it gets a little bit more complicated. It becomes kind of like a like a like a little bit of puppetry or a little bit of like I don't know, moving stuff around. Um, you know, it's the analogy I sometimes use is sometimes like gridlock, right? So gridlock, I got to remember, oh, I got to move this over and I got to move that back and I got to move this forward to kind of alleviate the gridlock. So you drive forward, but you back up, but you move left and you move right and you go first and you and I kind of deal with that. Again, here, if I'm on this clip here. And I mark an in point around this clip and an out point around this clip. 
and I say, hey, let's remove this. If I don't have these tracks on, can I remove this? Yeah, I can X out and remove this. But guess what happens to my B-roll? I didn't move a space for my B-roll. And now my B-roll is offset. It's not covering the jump cut, which is definitely not what I want. That's a problem. So it's, it's a thing you have to think about. It's a thing you have to concern yourself with of how this thing works. Um, this way, this first way, this Fidel way, I'm never going to have that problem. I'm never going to have that problem of pushing things over. If I push over my video, I'm pushing over my video and my video all pushes over. Once I get upper tracks, it becomes a lot more to think about, especially when you're zoomed in and you're not thinking about the effect you're having 20 feet down the timeline. Yeah, if you're not thinking about it, having this stuff on upper tracks becomes a tricky thing. Now, like I said, there are some people who will insist this is the way to do it. Do it this way. There is no other way to do it. This is the way you do it. And this is wrong. I, I've worked with people like that. Um, I don't necessarily agree with them, but this is the way they said, this is wrong. You have to do it this way. This is the only way that makes sense. And sure. Okay, then do it that way. Uh, there is value to this way. And this is the way that I first started learning how to make cutaways on an edited sequence in Media Composer. Media Composer was my first edited sequence, my first edited NLE that I worked with. And so this is what you did. But um, those are the fundamentals of the editing interface. Understanding the track selectors, understanding what happens when we turn off source side track selectors versus what happens when we turn on track timeline track selectors and those kind of things and having that as an idea um, and understanding splice in and overwrite and lift and extract. Splice in makes your sequence longer. Extract makes your sequence longer. Uh, overwrite and lift most, most often don't make your sequence longer or shorter, at least from the middle. Uh, they don't make your sequence any longer or shorter because they're just copying on top or removing and leaving that blank space, which is not making your sequence any shorter. Um, later on, we'll get into some ideas of moving clips around the timeline and also getting around to one of my favorite things, which is trimming. But for now, understanding how this works and basically doing it, you know, basically working through it. It's one thing to listen to me and watch me do it and just kind of nod your head, but it's going to be another thing to kind of actually work through it and get used to this idea. I don't need this track three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I just did that quickly just to show you that there's multiple tracks you can make and have that there. We're going to get rid of these other tracks. We'll just click on these and hit the delete key on the keyboard and hit delete and say, are you sure you want to delete these tracks? Yeah, let's delete these tracks. And just for fun, we're going to make a new audio track. So I'm going to timeline new audio track mono and make a new mono audio track. And on this new mono audio track, we're going to grab in music. I know you're looking for music. We're going to bring the music down a little bit, maybe down to minus eight, nine decibels here. And I'm going to have this music here. We're just going to mark this here. And I'm going to put this on the track three here. So A1 to A3. It was on A1 to A1. I'm going to push this A1 A3. This is just one mono track of audio. And I'm going to mark from here in the beginning to right to where Fidel starts speaking. We're going to have this here. And we're going to say overwrite. And we have a little music there in the beginning. So the minority. Now we're going to talk about how to fade that out later on at some point, I promise. But for now, you know, I, I, I said I was going to bring in some music. We brought you in some music. It's kind of cool sounding. So a little quiet, but we'll work on it. We'll work with audio at some other future lesson. All right, that's all we're gonna do for today. Um, we'll move on to more exciting stuff later.